Welcome, and thank you for taking a moment today to focus in on the things of God. Have you ever had something in your life that kept you from being the person that you really knew God wanted you to be? In the Bible, Paul talks about his thorn in the flesh. And we're going to think about our thorns in the flesh today. We're going to look in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to think about those things that keep us, uh, I guess, from being the people that we know we should be. Things that may gnaw at us every day. We're going to start reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll begin reading in verse 6. Paul said, even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so that no one will think more of me than warranted by what I do or say or because of those surpassingly great revelations. And therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. And therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. I'm sure if, you've, <laughs> if you're a human being, at some point you've had this situation come up. There are some people that we meet that seem to enjoy talking about the problems that they have. In fact, to the point that sometimes people might be afraid to actually ask them, how are you doing? Because they're afraid the person would tell them. Well, Paul was a person who had a lot of opportunity to complain, but he didn't do that. And in this passage, he makes a statement about his thorn in the flesh. And it's a good thing that Paul shared that because so often we might say things, well, why has God given me this situation in my life to deal with? Well, first of all, maybe God didn't give it to you at all. Maybe it was self-inflicted and too often that's the case. We, we suffer the consequences of our own actions. But in verse 7, Paul said that his thorn was a messenger of Satan that had been sent to torment him. The devil wants us to believe that God tortures us, when in fact, most of the suffering we have is the result of doing the things the devil wants us to do. And Paul was a human being, so he was no different from us in that respect. But the million dollar question is, well, what was Paul's thorn in the flesh? Of course, the bottom line is nobody knows what it was. Maybe it was a bad temper. You know, Lord knows he had plenty of reason to be angry. He had been forgotten by people in the church. He had been abused by people. He had been tired and hungry and all kinds of things. Or maybe he was ashamed of the fact that he had 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 Christians killed before he became a Christian. Paul had done some horrible things to people, and now he understood that Jesus was the way, and those people that he had killed were actually going in the right direction. He could have been suffering from what we might call today PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Maybe the thorn in his flesh was an enemy that he had. We know that there were people who followed Paul from one place to the next. They were called the Judaizers. And they just followed him to make his life miserable. They were like a fly in your face that won't leave you alone. And a lot of the letters that Paul wrote talk about how to deal with false teachers. They, they never left him alone. Maybe it was his carnal nature. I've read people suggesting that Paul never married, so maybe he had trouble dealing with his attractions to women. Maybe it was some sort of physical affliction that he had. Paul had been beaten and flogged so many times it wouldn't be out of the question that he had wounds that never fully healed or after all that physical abuse he could have had uh, arthritis a lot of people think maybe it was something to do with his eyesight i mean the idea that it was something physical would explain in some part why he had luke uh, the the writer of the gospel of luke and the and the uh, book of acts uh, who was a doctor traveling with him But it's an understatement to say that just like Paul, all of us have those thorns in our lives. But I think it's a good thing Paul didn't tell us what the thorn was. It's just enough to know that Paul had that affliction. 
And that affliction teaches us that there's no one who will ever be an exception to the suffering in this life. Think about how some of the people in, in God, uh, of God have suffered. You remember Job, and, and the Bible describes him having sores on his, on his skin. We imagine like a skin cancer. He was scraping them off with pottery. When Moses was called to speak on God's behalf, he had to tell God he was at a stammering tongue. He was a person who stuttered. Jeremiah was overwhelmed with his own sense of the deficiencies that he had in his life. Peter had a, a horrible temper, and, and the list could go on and on. But of course, the greatest example of someone who had to suffer is the example of Jesus. So if we have some sort of thorn in the flesh, I guess we could say that we're in really good company. But how do we deal with those thorns? We could try to deny it. We could try to refuse to admit that we have a thorn in the flesh. Some people turn to things like drugs and alcohol and other people get hardened to the fact that they have a thorn in their flesh. But let's think about how Paul dealt with the thorn in the flesh that he had. First of all, he prayed about it. You know, it's sad to admit, but a lot of people look at prayer as almost an afterthought. When all else fails, I guess we have to pray or You'll hear people say, well, all we can do now is pray, and that's where you should have started. But when someone asks us to pray for them, sometimes it's almost like that Hail Mary pass. A lot of times people won't even ask for prayer until they get to the point they know that they only have a few months to live. Well, Paul admitted that he'd had the problem and that he'd prayed three times for the Lord to take it away, but God didn't take it away. God allowed that thorn to continue. Why would he do that? Well, I don't know. But I do know that that thorn in the flesh led to a couple of actions on Paul's part. First of all, I know it made Paul rely on the grace of God. You know, that thorn brought Paul to the point that he realized that he understood more about God's grace than he had before. Even though God's answer to Paul uh, wanting the thorn removed was no, what Paul took away from it was a message from God where God explained to him, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is going to be made perfect in your weakness. So Paul learned his weakness was a way for God's grace to be seen in an even greater way. If it was some mistake that Paul had made in his life, God's grace was covering it. If it was some physical struggle that weakened Paul, God's power was going to be seen in that weakness. And it was going to be used by God in a great way. So Paul prayed about it, but that leads to the next section. You notice that Paul glorified that thorn in verse 9. Paul said, basically, he was glad he was suffering because he knew that the power of Christ was in him. And Paul's describing the same power that rested on the temple and the power that led the Israelites through the wilderness. It's the same power that Moses felt on Mount Sinai. He felt the power that could be seen in the personal presence of God. So Paul was saying this thorn is making it possible for the personal presence of God to rest on me. Listen, God gives us the grace to bear our pain. And he brings us to the place where we can glory in our suffering. And even though the world <laughs> will never understand this, we're able to thank God even for the thorns in our life. But you know, that's something that can only happen for those who believe. We know today that God can take the worst things in our life and use them for his honor and glory. Look, if you're not a believer, I want to challenge you today to take that step of faith and let Jesus Christ be the Lord and Savior of your life. If you are a believer, I want to challenge you today to look at the thorns in your life as ways for God to see, show you His grace and His power through your weakness. We're going to have a prayer together. And then as we pray, I'm going to be praying for you that you'll make the decision that God wants you to make. Let's pray together. Lord, again, we thank you for another day. I'm thankful today that we have the grace of God. 
because we all need it far more than we'll, we'll be willing to admit. But we also need your power. Lord, I'm glad that your grace and your power are seen in our weakness. And I'm thankful that your grace is enough for us, no matter what we're going through. I pray for those today who've never received you as Lord and Savior. I pray that you'll open their heart to receive you. And Lord, I pray for those who do believe that you'll give them the strength that they need and help them to see how your grace and your power is working in their lives as we commit ourselves to you here. In Jesus' name, amen.